So Basila, you can uh, yeah, introduce just a, the webinars. Yeah. Yeah, just a quick update on the project in general and then specifically um, uh, on this webinar. So as you all know, uh, the early track had started a long time ago and is almost over. So they have about a week to go. And so they um, are um, basically finishing up the project now. The late track has started just a couple of days ago. So I assume those watching now have received their team assignments by now. And so your task this week is only to get to know your team members. So just email them on email, introduce yourselves, uh, and basically start looking for the list on the list of the companies and deciding which one you want to work on. And so, as you know, one of the companies this semester is Alibaba, and it's a somewhat strange, not strange, but special arrangement. So uh, one, um, so there are four companies within one track. So Alibaba, the commerce online commerce platform, is the sort of the big client. But as a representation or as a sort of special cases of um, Alibaba's challenges, we have four companies and all four are Italian companies that operate on Alibaba's platform. And so those are the companies asking for your help and input. And then one important notice uh, related to Alibaba. So I did ask you before the project started if you would like to be in this special track. Uh, and so some of you have already been assigned to teams where everybody selected Alibaba. And so, it, so you know the reason we did it is because we have some students, as I explained in my email, from Milan Polytechnic University who need to be in the Alibaba track because of the special relation they have, the university has with the company. So some of you chose Alibaba track, but were not put in, in sort of Alibaba teams, but you can still choose that client. So anybody, regardless of which team you are on, if you decide to work on this challenge, you obviously can, so that's not a problem. So therefore, uh, uh, it, it's a choice for everyone. It just some sort of predestined and others can freely choose to be in this track or any other track. And uh, yeah, so I'll turn the microphone to Professor Stefano Elia. So he's been with Exculture for like 10 years. So one of the longest- less, eight. 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 Oh. Okay, well, it yeah. feels like forever, so it could be <laughs> eight. younger, yeah. Yes. <laughs> and so okay. uh, his class uh, students are participating in the project this semester, always a very strong class. We'll see how these uh, this cohort will do, but uh, Italian students always show a uh, super class. So it will be tough competition, but uh, yes. So, so Professor Elia, back to you and uh, uh, introduction of the company and managing the webinar. Yeah. So thank you very much, uh, um, Basil, for the introduction. So uh, today, as you were saying, uh, we are basically presenting the four uh, companies that are linked to uh, Alibaba. In particular, we are uh, um, hosting uh, uh, Virginia Vassallo. She will. Uh, uh, give us uh, four different presentations uh, of the four companies that have been involved uh, by Alibaba for the uh, challenge, for the Exculture Challenge. And uh, these companies are Cantina di Soave, DDS, Thermalis and uh, uh, Voltolina. So four Italian companies that have uh, uh, a need to internationalize and that uh, really uh, are joining the Exculture uh, challenge uh, uh, with uh, enthusiasm because they uh, really uh, want to, uh, let's say, find the new markets where to invest and where to sell their products. So, so uh, with Virginia, we agreed to uh, dedicate about 20 minutes for each presentation. So um, 20 minutes uh, in which we will give just a very short uh, uh, presentation of the companies uh, and then uh, uh, that will last between five, ten minutes maximum, another ten minutes so will be dedicated to the questions. So we leave the flow open to the questions so that uh, uh, we try to provide information based on what you ask rather than, when, rather than just presenting the company by itself. So um, thank you, Virginia, for being with us. So thank you. I just, uh, give you the possibility to share the screen. Uh, what's the first company you're going to present for us? Cantina di Soave. Okay. Uh, let me see. Uh, are you able to share or no? I cannot share my um, the presentation actually. Okay. I can just share the other pages here in the browser. Um, 
just let me see how I can give you the possibility to do it. It's, my, it's uh, a problem on my side. Let me try ah, to... Indeed, indeed, because I don't find the option that generally I find uh, to give you the possibility to share. Otherwise, if you want, Plenty you can send... the it. other side. So just one second. Okay, let's admit Virginia again. Hey, thank okay. you. Should be able. Let's yes, I am able to do it. Okay, thank you, okay. Virginia. Okay, so hello everyone. I'm Virginia Vassallo. I'm uh, working at Alibaba.com. So today we will start with uh, Cantina di Soave. That is one of the four companies that are joining uh, uh, this project this year. So Cantina di Soave is a, um, is a company that has a very long story. It is in the market for more than 120 uh, years. Um, they are leading producer on both national and international level of wine. So they are in a um, north of Italy region and uh, they are currently managing almost the 50% of all the vineyards in, uh, in, the, in this zone of, uh, of Italy. Uh, and uh, um, they are very, uh, very well known. And as we will see um, in a short, uh, with a wide um, range of uh, products for different use uh, of the wine for different channels uh, and with the broad experience uh, already also in uh, um, doing uh, uh, export. So, um, as I was saying, they have uh, um, a big uh, number, uh, a huge number of uh, hectares of vineyards. You can see 64,000 is one of the biggest one in, uh, in Italy. Their turnover uh, in, is uh, of $130 million every year. And they are big, they are more, uh, between 100 and 200 people, uh, and they are producing uh, 42 million bottles. So a very big company in the, in the wine. As I was saying, they are already doing an uh, export. They are uh, focused in, uh, in Europe with more than 70% uh, of their sales uh, in the Western Europe, and then apart for North Europe and Eastern one. Um, and then they already also be able in the past to um, do export in North America and also they have just started um, some uh, export in the Southeast uh, Asia. So they, these are uh, um, good points for, for the challenge because it makes um, easier for them to do business abroad. They have the capabilities to do it. Um, they are used to do and they have all the certification needed to export uh, the wine, their product uh, outside uh, Italy and, uh, and Europe. In terms of tradeability, as I was saying, um, they can speak many languages. That is not something that is uh, so usual for Italian companies, but they have a big team, a uh, trade department of almost 10 people, and they can speak English, Spanish, German, and uh, Italian, so all the main um, European uh, uh, languages. They are missing just French, but we know that in France there is quite uh, competition with uh, French wine companies. They, uh, the nearest port for uh, um, their uh, export is Venice, Genova and Trieste, so the north of, uh, of Italy, and their average lead time is 21 days. As I was saying, they are working with different channels, so they have the Horeca uh, channel and uh, the both uh, also the online one using Alibaba.com, uh, but also some other category specific uh, online uh, marketplace. They are, of course, attending to all the main trade show. Uh, in a few weeks, there will be in Italy, in, um, in Italy, and they are attending also this uh, uh, trade show. And uh, they, of course, have also their own vineyard shop, so shop close to their uh, vineyard and their, where they have the production of wine, and also a close collect connection with, uh, um, with the, the, the region where they are. So if we uh, have a look in their value and, miss and mission, uh, as I was saying right now, if we start from the last two, uh, they have a high commitment in protect and promote uh, the history and the environment um, of their uh, area. So uh, they are doing a restoration and they are also creating itinerant tasting. So they have also this kind of line of, uh, um, of selling 
thing and is part of their value and mission to uh, bring abroad uh, what is the, um, the historical heritage of their uh, area. Um, they are also a lot committed in sustainability of the VT, VT culture, um of the activities uh, with water rationalization, soil biodiversity. They have some uh, particular software um, that are uh, that are very advanced and can give them many information about the soil uh, where they are uh, uh, having their um, their products and uh, in this way um, they can do um, a lot of uh, uh, energy savings and also all the part about reducing uh, the, the energy consumption. So they this is something that must be taken into account when analyzing this company, all the both uh, uh, value around sustainability and also value about uh, bringing uh, a part of Italy uh, abroad everywhere. As I was saying, they have different brands um, for also different kind of uh, of channels. So they have uh, Equip Five and Maximilian uh, that are the historic, sparkling, and prestigious wine brand of uh, of the company. So with the highest price and also with um, the bringing the real, um, the, the best, the excellence of their uh, area uh, abroad. Then they have poesia, that means poem, uh, that are wines that are designed only for the horeca, so for restaurants and high-end uh, high bars. And then they have uh, also uh, other um, other different brands, so like Predom, Roccasbeva, and Selezioni Venete, that is a portfolio of different kind of uh, wines of the Verona tradition, so of the area where they are based, um, and uh, um, are more uh, used also to be found uh, into the supermarkets and different other uh, channels. So this is an over a general overview of uh, the company. Um, I don't know if you have any question about any of these uh, slides and about the presentation of the company. Uh, okay, thank you, Virginia. Uh, I have some questions, but I prefer first uh, to give the possibility to the students to ask questions because maybe yes. my questions are the same and I prefer them to, to ask. So I see Dora. Dora, if you can uh, open your cam and ask your question to Virginia. Uh, hi, um, the presentation was like very good. Um, I have one question. You said, um, Maybe I'm not understanding it correctly. So you said uh, online, um, like uh, the, the online is the Alibaba, right? And the other other stuff. So if you can go yeah. back to the. Yeah. 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 So like yeah, it, it, it belongs to the online one, right? Um, is there any more online channels for for the company uh, other than Alibaba? Yes. Well, Alibaba.com is for the B2B part. So he is uh, willing to uh, to be used to find other buyers, so other companies that are interested in importing um, their products and selling abroad in the countries where they are coming from. Uh, apart from this, they are in B2C marketplaces for more specific of uh, for their category. Uh, in Italy, they are on Wine360, that is a website, a marketplace just for wine, um, where they are selling to the final consumer. So they are having a good coverage about the online uh, um, the online channels. Um, I think that they are not on, uh, on Amazon. Uh, you can have a look uh, for all the specific marketplace of Amazon. So Amazon, you know, they have Amazon.it, .de, .fr, dot com and so on so you can see if they are in some of them but uh mainly they are using these two um online channels so alibaba.com as general one for the b2b and category specific uh, wine uh, marketplace for the b2c part i hope i reply to your question yes okay thank you so much thank you okay thank you dora uh, other question for the students that want to ask uh, some curiosity something about their company Okay, Virginia, I can ask a question, for instance, as regards the markets, I've seen that they are present basically in uh, uh, mainly in Western Europe, uh, yeah. Northern Europe, Eastern Europe, uh, and uh, uh, Southern Europe, yes. So my question is, uh, first of all, if you can give uh, some more details about the countries uh, uh, where they are present or not, and whether you already know uh, 
what is their preference, although of course the challenge should not be driven uh, only by the preference of the customers, but should be based on the analysis that uh, uh, students do on the, uh, let's say, market success criteria and so on and so forth. But if you have um, any, uh, let's say, uh, orientation uh, uh, by the in terms of uh, uh, strategic markets that uh, the uh, owners, uh, the managers of Cantina yeah. Soave are targeting, let's say, and yeah. why? Yeah. Yes, sure. Um, so actually, um, as you can see from data in Europe, they are already well, uh, um, well, well co covering well uh, the market being, uh, of course, uh, in uh, in Italy, in uh, Germany, and in the Nordics mainly. Um, they also start working in uh, into Spain and Greece, so in some other area of uh, the southern Europe. Um, the two more new market that they are going to are the North America and the, the South. Southeast Asia. So Southeast Asia, uh, of course, for the challenges Stefano was saying, you can take into account every country and also create a strategy for a specific country where they are already maybe doing export, but giving some uh, uh, more interesting point and a more detailed strategy for them. Um, if we want to, um, on the other side, go to try to do a different assumption and try to create a strategy in the market where they are just at the beginning of, for sure, the Southeast Asia, New Zealand, Australia, that part could be um, could be the, the 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 part of the world to to focus on. Uh, Taking into account, of course, the distances and also the cultural differences that the, uh, these uh, uh, countries can have that are also different in terms of uh, usage of uh, of the wine um, in their uh, lifestyle. Okay, thank you. Uh, there was a hand raised, but I, I don't see it anymore. So, um, can, can I ask a quick question, please? Uh, yes, of course. Yeah, just curious, and uh, it comes up all the time too. Um, so, transporting wine, uh, can the transportation um, sort of damage the quality of wine? Can it be, I don't know, I assume during transportation you have all the shaking and changes in temperatures and perhaps other stresses on the uh, product. So does it does it make why I mean, can it spoil wine in some way? Is it something yeah. that is a big concern? Just curious. Yeah, no, they can do it. Of course, it has a different price uh, compared to other products that can be handled in a more easy way uh, during transportation. Um, for the temperature, is not too much a problem, so it is not uh, the controlled temperature that is needed all the time. They just do not need to go over um, some temperature or too much down, but usually is not uh, is not uh, happening if you are not going to Siberia, Siberia or something like this. Yeah. Um, so it's usually is not a problem. Um, it's a problem more about the, the packaging. So it's not just the, 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 simple, the simple box that they can have to do, but they have to do single bottle uh, oh, packaging glass. and then put it in a box that is fixed and then in a hard box. So in terms of the uh, of cost, of course, is a uh, higher uh, the transportation of wines. But this is not a disadvantage of the company because I mean it's the same for all the wines companies. Um, they are a made in Italy company, and we know that Italy is one of the most well known uh, uh, and well known uh, um, countries for the production of wine, together with France, of course. Spain and now also some other uh, different countries from the world, but um, is um, is a, a kind of product that it's uh, um, for very far countries. It's positioned in a high uh, in a premium uh, sector. So um, if we think about a restaurant in South Asia having Italian wine or sparkling wine, is would probably um, a high ended uh, restaurant, for example, and so already. Uh, a bit, um, um, used, used to to this market and the prices connected to to this kind of product, but they have different lines also in terms of pricing, so um, they can combine the, the the different products. Thank you. Thank you for your question. So there is a question by Tayab Ali. Please go on. Hello, hello, hello. I just have a question. And among all of these wine products, oh, what is their most uh, premium wine, and uh, what is their most uh, premium product uh, in terms of sales? Yeah. 
Yeah, so um, actually it depends a little bit um, from the different uh, uh, channels, but the most premium and historical one are Maximilian first and Equipe 5, uh, the third the sparkling wines. Um, so we're not going to, to many details in terms of uh, uh, how the wine is produced, but this wine, it has a, a, an historical way of producing it um, that to make you an example uh, as kind of like champagne, so they are well known in the wine sector, uh, is called Metodo Classico, so it's a particular way of preparing wine, sparkling wine, uh, rotating the bottle every X days to create the correct uh, um, sparkling of, uh, of the wine itself. Um, so this one for sure, these two brands are the more uh, uh, prestigious one. Um, while, for example, these other are more used into the B2C sector or um, the consumer one, and Poesie is just mainly for uh, for restaurant. But yeah, to the most, uh, the, pre the premium one is uh, for sure a keep and a Maximilian. Okay, thank you, Virginia. We have another question by Isal Munoz, please. You are on mute. <laughs> yeah, we cannot really leave. Hi, uh, good morning. Where the products can be found in North America, in this case, United States? In which area of United States? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I do not know. I do not have this level of uh, of information. It's in the USA, oh. but I do not know which uh, which area. All righty, thank you. But actually, this is a good question because, uh, of course, doing an expert in the US, uh, it has also different uh, um, target of population and different uh, also cost in transportation if we look at New York or LA. So that's uh, for sure a good point to take into consideration when you create, if you uh, are willing to create an export strategy for the, the US market. Thank you. And... Um... Uh, some uh, information about marketing uh, strategy that they're using uh, online, offline channels. Uh, do you know something, Virginia, about uh, the marketing strategies implemented yes. by Cantina Suave? Yes, uh, for the online, mainly for Alibaba.com, they are um, using, uh, um, they have a very strong marketing uh, um, advertising strategy. So they are putting budget inside uh, the platform to promote their product and to be listed in the first results of the search. Um, so for sure, for the online market, they are investing um, in, um, in a higher way compared to other Italian companies also of the sector. And this is because they are a um, well-structured company. They are not just a small company producing some bottle of wines, but they are a huge companies um, doing, um, doing wine. Um, for the offline, as I was saying, uh, they are present. So doing a, a big in investment uh, to be present in some of the biggest trade show uh, with their own uh, um, stand inside, for example, in, uh, in Italy. Um, and um, well, that, that's the main, uh, I would say, investment in terms of marketing that uh, um, that they are doing. Then, of course, they have a, um, a good uh, part of um, a good team of export manager uh, keep negotiating and uh, um, looking over the different channels, uh, creating new connection. Of course, trade show and online channels can be a good way to create new contacts. OK, perfect. Thank you very much. So any other question, guys, that you want to ask before we switch to the next uh, uh, presentation? We still have a couple of minutes. So if someone wants to ask something, otherwise uh, uh, we can switch in a while to the next presentation. Any curiosity, any uh, say information? OK. Um, Okay, so uh, Virginia, I think uh, we can uh, switch uh, to the uh, next presentation. So DDS, uh, yes. we are talking Perfect. about coffee. So thank you.
OK, so DDS. DDS is a company that uh, um, is specialized in the production of uh, pods espresso machines, so coffee machines um, with pods, not with coffee beans. Um, the, the point of this company is that 100% made in Italy. So everything from the idea to all the parts of the uh, machine are done uh, in Italy with, uh, by the company and from uh, their Italian partners. Um, uh, from a different, uh, differently from the other uh, companies that we have just seen, they are also offering all the private label services. So um, they are selling both. They have the, the both both the two channel channel where they are selling their product with their own brand, and also the channel where they can create from scratch um, the design of a machine or just put a different brand on it and do the personalization that buyers can uh, uh, can ask the, um, to them. Um, they have also a very widespread network of uh, external service centers that are giving constant support uh, after sales, uh, after the, the after the sales of uh, of the product. So they are both um, organized in the creation and in the production of the product, the sales of the product through their partners mainly, and then uh, also the after sales and support on their machine. Um, as I was saying, they are totally uh, made in Italy companies. They are a smaller companies. They are between 11 to 50 uh, people. In 2023, they have produced, uh, um, produced 323k um, machines. So a good number of, uh, of machine for sure. And uh, the 10% of their turnover is already uh, coming from uh, export. So as you can see, 50% um, is, uh, uh, these are average uh, numbers. So 50% is made uh, in, uh, in the domestic market. So Southern Europe, uh, they are working already in uh, some other um, countries here in Europe. And then they are already exporting the product in uh, the US, Southeast, uh, um, Southeast, uh, South America, sorry, and in the, in the Middle East. So, um, but in a very low percentage. So when you see below 5%, it means that maybe they have just one contact or some um, few partners in um, in that countries. They uh, are smaller also in terms of tradability. They can speak mainly English and uh, Italian. They have just two people in the trade department. So uh, take into uh, account that the resources are limited compared to the previous company that we have seen in doing the, the export strategy. The nearest port for them is Napoli, so from the south of Italy, and they have an average lead time that is uh, lower, it's just 10 days. In terms of channel, they have uh, Horeca uh, as one of the main uh, channel um, for the B2B part, and then also the large electronic shop, the large, large scale electronic shop for the B2C part. Uh, they are also, of course, uh, um, present in the main trade show of the category and present also online with their own website and, uh, uh, for example, for the B2B market present, of course, also on, uh, on Alibaba.com. Um, the production line, they have mainly um, three um, product line, um, Frog Revolution and Baby Frog. Baby Frog is just the small version of the Frog Revolution. Uh, Frog Revolution, inside the website, you can find all the history of this product, but this product has um, brought innovation inside uh, uh, the market for the innovative design of the product. Uh, um, these machines are ideal for the home environment, um, so mainly for the B2C use, but also practical, for example, for offices, while the twin is a double um, coffee machine um, that is the perfect solution for bars, restaurants, so for the Horeca sector. And that's all from, uh, uh, from DDS. You are on mute, Stefano. <laughs> Now I can uh, talk. So let's see if, um, first of all, we have some questions. So thank you. Um, as regard the company by the students, otherwise I will ask some questions. Uh, so let's see if uh, someone has uh, some specific requests. 
otherwise uh, um, some other points was so this company as all the companies that we have choose for this year challenge are uh, um, a lot focus on sustainability and for example in energy uh, savings so their machine have uh, been also awarded um, some of this machine about uh, being one of the uh, with the less energy consumption on uh, on the market uh, also the, um, the the reason why they are using pots instead of uh, uh, coffee beans is a part of their uh, um, sustainable um, choice in um, in entering into the the coffee market so so also for this um, company is not present in the presentation, uh, but it has, um, of course, a lot of focus also on, uh, on sustainability and energy um, savings. Okay, that's question. another element that uh, we yeah. can add. So let's see, uh, first of all, the question, uh, given that there are uh, two uh, hands raised. The first one is from Christopher, please. Oh, thank you very much. Um, thank you also for the presentation. Um, what would be the unique selling proposition of uh, DDS compared maybe to Nespresso, for example? Yeah, well, first of all, they are all 100% made in Italy. So it means that all the part of the products are made in Italy. So the idea and the design is made in Italy, but also uh, all the part of the product are done by Italian partners or the company itself. So it's a totally 100% made in Italy uh, coffee machine. Uh, and as you know, again, like wines, uh, Italy is well known for the coffee um, coffee market and how we do coffee and how much we drink coffee. Um, so the art of doing coffee is for sure one of uh, uh, the values of uh, Italy and being a 100% percent made in Italy companies. This is, I think, one of the best uh, um, selling points and advantages that the companies can uh, can use going uh, going abroad. Thank you very much. Thank you for your question. Okay, Isel. Okay. Hi, I have another question. Did you mention uh, sustainability? for the company, I mean, that they um, they are like a main concern is sustainability. What about the pots? Yeah, are the, the pots, pots are, like no, are not the pots like the Nespresso one that we are used to, to see, are all in um, uh, with paper. So are the small one in paper very also very thin. So also in terms of space and so shipping uh, and uh, export uh, are uh, saving space. And so uh, having also uh, some savings, not just in terms of price, but also in terms of uh, energy uh, in general consumed in the transportation, because with the same um, size of a package, you can store much more of their pots compared to um, the Nespresso one, for example, that we are used, and also compared to the the beans, the the, um, the box of beans. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for your question. Okay. Then I see a question by Alessandro. Please go on, Alessandro. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, just a quick question. Uh, do we know exactly uh, the countries where they export already? Um, no, I just know the, I just have the, the broad area. Um, I can tell you that they are mainly in, uh, in the domestic market. So just a small part of their uh, turnover, we have seen just 10% is then um, in foreign countries. So uh, I would say that you are quite open to create a strategy in whichever market that you think it could be um, a good selection, um, a good choice for uh, for the company. Uh, also, not being a, um, just a, a, a properly food company, so not producing food, it's also easier for them to uh, sell um, in terms of certification in uh, a broad country. So in this case, I think it's... Uh, um, all the words in your hands uh, when you have to choose which could be uh, the best countries. Uh, take into consideration mainly, of course, the, the culture of coffee, the coffee consumption, and uh, how much this product 
you can choose B2B or a sector or B2C1 or B2B2C. So you will choose which is the best one. Uh, but uh, um, every every country can be for them um, uh, interesting um, to have a strategy to, to do the export. Okay, thank you. So we make some assumptions and uh, yes, attendance. actually for, for all the companies, um, I mean, there is no right or wrong uh, answer in terms of choose the market. You will do your assumption. Of course, some of the assumption, I mean, mainly will be based on uh, on analytics and data that you can find about the company, but also about the market. Um, so in this way, uh, if the assumption are good assumption and based on data, and then you are coherent in all your next step in the market selection, you cannot do it wrong. Uh, it's just, uh, um, based on uh, on your analysis so if there are no and in this case for sure there are less limitation in terms of certification needed uh, or resources or other barrier competition or whatever but uh, every country can uh, can be chosen is just based on your assumption in your analysis okay perfect thank you very much thank you okay. Virginia, maybe you can um, tell us something about the channels. So besides Alibaba, what other online offline channels are used for selling? Yes. So um, one of the other the, the other main channel for sure for them is the Horeca. Um, so selling the machine to um, add to to bars, bars restaurant, yeah. uh, yes, in general. Uh, and the other one where they are uh, well present are large scale electronic shops, mainly in Italy for this part. Mm, so okay. Can you hear and, me? Uh, yeah, yeah. And uh, as regards the online, uh, besides uh, Alibaba, uh, they, are they, they present? Have their, they have their own uh, um, website um, for uh, for sure, um, and they they are on some other um, website of, for example, this large electronic shop. Okay, so um, they also have a kind of uh, B. To B to C strategy. While as regards the pricing, uh, something mm -hmm. more, if you can tell what is the policy behind the so to propose as a high quality type of machine, uh, coffee machine, or whether they are adopting uh, a kind of uh, competition strategies so by it's a competition price. strategy so looking at the pricing uh, for this company um, they are comparable for example to the Nespresso one that everyone knows uh, uh, from uh, all around the world so it's not uh, much more premium neither um, the the first level of price uh, of uh, of the product so they are quite competitive and in line with uh, um, with the, the main competitors on uh, on the market, um, the the things that we need to also take into account that is that they are completely owner of the machine. So they are selling the machine, but they are also selling everything that is related to the machine. Not in terms of cups um, of the of the um, of coffee, but in terms of product that needs to so like the filter uh, or uh, the liquid that needs to do the maintenance of. Uh, of the um, of the of the machine so also the after sales part is not just about customer relationship and technical support but is also about uh selling actually and have other and, and other revenue streams for all the other products that are related uh, uh to to the machine so they, they offer also some after sales services to for repairing yes, and maintenance they and have uh, um they have external services they have some centers uh in uh, in italy mainly uh and uh, um a network of uh, of partners so not them doing it directly but partners trained to do uh, the um, the support on their uh, on their yeah. machine and what about logistics? How do they manage it? Especially not only of the, the entire product, but also of the components. Yeah, well, uh, it depends from uh, on where the, the shipping mm -hmm. is um, is as well is has has to go. So for large distance, the um, the by um, nave um, ship. 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 Mm -hmm. Okay, ship is the is the preferred one. Uh, while for closer distance, so like European distance, the the usual carriers, so the truck are the main uh, um, way of uh, of shipping the product. 
Okay. Uh, the need depends actually on also on the quantity, of course, because uh, for uh, um, th this is a product that actually is quite good for be shipped also by plane because it's small, it's not too big, and it has not a heavy weight, so uh, it can be done also in uh, in different in all the different uh, uh, way that uh, are available based on, of course, the quantity. So it's very different if they are just order some machine or maybe just one machine for uh, uh, the restaurant. Of course, the plane can be an option also to go into the US, while if they are selling like one thousand or one container of uh, of machines to some distributor. Of course, the the ship is the the, the best way for large distance. Yeah, and um, as regard the uh, customer, is there a way through which you can segment your customer? So the typical customer, I'm speaking about the B two C. Uh, or it, uh, of course, are people that uh, uh, love coffee, and uh, but is did you observe also some? Uh, I don't know, um, more specific demand based on the age, gender, education, and so on, something. Yeah, um, uh, doing my assumption and uh, uh, knowing the, the product is a, a kind of different uh, target compared again to, to Nespresso. Um, so Nespresso is a, something that gives you the possibility to do really everything online and with very low uh, contact with the uh, a physical person. Of course, they have their physical shop, but is a premium. Try to do a be to do have a premium experience with a nice place to go. While DDS is also more technical, um, so it is for people that uh, like to have contact with someone, explaining to them the product, and also giving the support needed after the sale. So having someone physical dedicated uh, to you that can support if your machine is not working, uh, and not just a call center supporting you. Um, so probably is um, for people that has uh, that are older compared to uh, to Nespresso, for example. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, um, for uh, uh, area also where the online is also more difficult to be done, so area that are more remote. So if I talk about Italy, the south of Italy um, or uh, Sicily, so the island of Italy that are a region where it's more difficult uh, to ship a product uh, or uh, um, to have everything that is uh, that all the all the advantages that Nespresso uh, has. Uh, this kind of product that can be found in the uh, electronic shop that uh, uh, the people already know and know the, the seller and, uh, and all the people that are there uh, can give for them better trust and also giving them all the support and making them feel more comfortable in buying something that maybe they does not know how it works or they would have problem, they will have someone physically um, supporting them, uh, checking the machine, do all the maintenance parts. So is quite different, I would say older, but older is not just the uh, the, the correct, the, the only correct target can also be um, younger people, but less digitalized or, or with the less access to uh, the online and all the digital services that, for example, Nespresso or other competitors are, uh, are doing. Okay, thank you. We have time for the last question by Dora. Dora, please. Uh, hi, uh, so I wanted to ask, like, um, is all, like uh, you said, it's um, all made in, made in Italy. Is it like a big thing? Like, like, mm, like there are like few companies who do this? Or like, uh, I also want to ask, like, why is this company, in, in, in your opinion, um, like, good? Or like, why is it so good? Um, like, why, why is it um, a good thing to, to explore this opportunity? Yeah, as I was saying, uh, for sure, the being 100% made in Italy, in all his part and all his design is, of course, one of their uh, main advantages compared to also many other um, companies that are uh, just doing a, a coffee machine. Uh, at the same time, they are not the like biggest brand or most well-known brand in the in the coffee industry. Um, but yeah, I would say again the the 100% made in Italy and all the real uh, 
a physical person and uh, a physical support after sales and customer success that they have. These two things makes the company trustable and uh, with high quality. Also in terms of design, um, they are quite good uh, and uh, can be personalized and customized in all their parts. So just from just the color to also create uh, um, different patterns uh, um, compared to um, in line with uh, with a new brand or someone that wants to create uh, uh, their own uh, um, their own machines um, somewhere else in the world. So it's not just it's a good company is that has uh, both the strategy of uh, spreading uh, their brand, so create brand awareness and sell their own brand, uh, and also on the other side, the, um, the private label side of the business, so the customization that they are uh, able to do and also all the research and development that they can do on a product based on all the details and all the um, the needs of uh, um, of a buyer. Um, it's not so usual that um, a company is doing a product from scratch to the final product all inside their factory. Sometimes it's just to be done the last part of the product. So product may be made in, made in China, imported in Italy, adjusted a little bit. So just maybe change the color and then put the brand and it's a made in Italy. It's not a 100% made in Italy one. This is a 100%. It's done in all this part from, uh, from Italy. Okay. Uh, so, okay. Thank uh, you so much for summarizing it for me and like describing and thank you. It's thank more, you. much more much more clear. Thank you. Okay. okay. Alessandro, very quick. If you have a question, yeah. uh, yes, quick just question, quick yes. answer. Yes, sorry. Uh, do, uh, do we know if they already make some uh, marketing campaign? And the second question: Can we make some assumption uh, about uh, hiring some people? Uh, I don't know that can manage some part of the, of the project. I don't know. Yes, I mean, when you are uh, about the marketing campaigns, yes, for sure, they are also doing uh, um, advertising and say that, for example, Alibaba.com, that is what I uh, what I can know actually about their uh, their investment. Um, I can also suggest you if uh, these companies, uh, you can find them, for example, on Amazon, uh, you can see if they are spending in advertising because if they are on a marketplace and they are investing in advertising somewhere in small, maybe in a corner you should find the ADV AD advertising so this is a way also to understand for you just doing a search inside any marketplace where the companies can be uh, to see if they are investing or just being high for organic so you can see the difference um the second question was sorry about uh, if, if we can hire some people uh... So when you are dealing with companies that are uh, limited in terms of uh, resources, um, my suggestion is to not limit too much your uh, uh, your strategy. So to take into consideration all the possibilities that they have. Um, the things that I would suggest to you is to make it clear how to prioritize. So if you they, if you suggest you enter in a market and to do I don't know like one thousand things, uh, maybe make it clear which are the priorities or create a timetable. So probably if they are a small company, they will not just need one year, they will need five year plan to totally enter or to do all the things that you uh, are willing to do in the in that market to enter. Uh, and you can, of course, also suggest uh, um, additional additional resources. Always try to create something that it makes sense. So uh, if it's a small company and you will see online, you can find some uh, also data about the turnover. Um, be careful to not um, suggest to invest something that is not in their possibilities. So always try to be realistic. Okay. Okay. Sure. Thank you. Thank you very okay. much. We can switch to the next presentation. So thank you. Uh, so the next company, okay. Thermalis. Yes. This one is Thermalis. So Thermalis is a not too old companies like company like uh, Cantina di Soave that has 120 years of story. This company was born in 2012. Um, and uh, is uh, um, a family company. Um, they, what they wanted to do is to convert some empirical and traditional knowledge into applied scientific knowledge. So they developed uh, pioneering actually cosmetics and medical formulation that were combining biological active and natural compounds uh, with uh, certified ingredients. So create uh, something based a lot 
on the continuous scientific research. This is something very important talking about this company. They have a research and development uh, uh, team, so they are experts in the field of uh, uh, substance-based medical devices and in the creation of everything that is related to skincare, cosmetical uh, uh, products, but also raw materials. Um, so their mission is to provide health and beauty, tradition and science in science in just one solution. So put together the health and beauty and the tradition and science, everything in one uh, um, only product. Uh, they again are a very small company. There are less than five people as a family uh, company. Their turnover is still uh, under $1 million and they are focused a lot on the research and development. This is important because again, like DDS, but again in the beauty sector is something that is much more important. They are not just only selling the product with their brand, so with Thermalis brand, but they are also doing research and development and creating products again from scratch so from the needs of the buyer to the end of the product um, the main market is actually the domestic one um, together with uh, um, some other region in um, in europe um, the advantages of the company is that they have this very strong experience in the field of medical devices and that they have uh, um, some good certification. I know that you are not maybe familiar with this certification. If you will, um, um, if you will study this company, you will maybe um, do some analysis and understand that they are very good in terms of certification of, uh, of their product, putting again together um, all this natural ingredient with the science in order to create uh, um, very good uh, uh, product. Um, the tradability are quite good in terms of uh, language spoken, so they are talking English, French, Italian. The department is still small, so they are five people, more or less five people, and uh, we can say one or two of them are also working in the in the trading part. The nearest port is Venice, so north of Italy. The average lead time is a little bit longer compared to the others, is uh, 60 days. And in terms of channel, we have the hospitality, beauty reseller, the pharmacy also that is an important uh, um, channel for them, and uh, some online uh, um, shop like, for example, um, Alibaba, um, Alibaba.com for the um, for the B two B for the B two B part um, and uh, um, and their own website. Um, again, the hospitality, for example, is very important uh, together also with the pharmacy uh, because they are doing um, the, the customized product. So uh, I give you an example. If I am a, a big resort in the, I don't know, in the Maldives and I want to give to my uh, customer a product a beauty product, so like skincare, uh, skin cream, or uh, um, some other products related to the uh, to the beauty part. But I want to put my own brand. I, they can do it, so they can create um, a line of product with the details like the perfume or uh, all the ingredients that um, the buyer wants to have. Uh, plus also all the packaging and design and also the brand um, that they want to, to have on, uh, on the product. They have different product line. These are the line uh, where you can see their, uh, um, their own uh, uh, brand are all about the skincare. Uh, the difference is uh, mainly in the target. So everything that is remodeling and rejuvenating is for uh, older people, mainly female, while the cleanizer and purifying is for uh, uh, targeting a younger part of, uh, of the population. Open to question. Stefano, you are Thank on you, me. Virginia. Yes. Uh, thank you, Virginia. So first of all, let's see if there are some questions by uh, the participants before asking myself some questions. OK, one by Isa, please. Uh, does the um, bottles shows all the ingredients of the of the products? 
Yeah, this is a good question because actually is what is required by the law. Uh, the two the ingredients are uh, um, are listed. Of course, uh, they are compliant with uh, um, with the law uh, in terms of uh, uh, ingredients regulation, and so also all the uh, allergenic uh, ingredients are involved. Um, this is something that you have to keep in mind when you think about the export, because of course, for uh, uh, some countries around the world, there are some extra certification that are needed um, to to export the product or to sell just sell the product in that countries. And furthermore, in terms of uh, uh, ingredients, at least in, in Europe, the ingredients must be in the language of the country where you are selling. Um, so um, there are different ways to do it, because of course, if you are exporting a product everywhere, there are different ways. One way is to create uh, different labels for different markets. So I don't know, for German, just with the German uh, ingredients, for French, just with French uh, ingredient. The other one, uh, but this, sorry, this solution is difficult to be done because you should know in advance each, how much stock you want to create and to have for each countries. So the other way around that companies are using is to have just one label that usually can be open like a book uh, with all the languages already inserted. Um, so of course, this is a good point for uh, uh, beauty uh, products when they have to export, they have also to take into consideration some packaging change that they have to do, some translation change and the certification where is needed uh, um, to to export. Always remember about when you are doing uh, export strategy for this company, not just only think about their brand. So there are, as we were saying, two different kind of channels. So one is the brand and the other one is the private label and the research and development that they can do. So they can also find maybe a partner um, or a brand that is already well known in the countries where they want to export and create a line of product just for them. So with not their brand, but um, supplying the product itself to that to, to another brand. Great. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. While uh, uh, which do you think is, uh, let's say, the main selling point as regards their own brand? So how do you think they distinguish from the competitors as regards their main products, let's say? What yeah, is, is uh, uh, the aspect that they should leverage? Is the tradition that there is behind the product. So is uh, um, a tradition in uh, studying and developing and have done and doing research on the thermal is uh, uh, thermal ingredients and uh, so this kind of natural uh, product from a particular area of uh, of Italy on the website is uh, described very well uh, how it is uh, and um, so having this part of uh, have uh, um, converted something that was just tradition and uh, use of natural ingredient uh, uh, for the family to something that is is scientific and is certified to be uh, a good product for the skincare of people. So this uh, uh, evolution from just a traditional natural ingredient to a uh, um, final product uh, certified in a scientific way after a lot of research um, that is final and good for uh, for final use and for the consumers. Okay. And it's not main... an industrial product, what I would say. Yeah, it's not yeah. something industrial done with a lot of chemical uh, uh, ingredients, but it's something that has uh, um, a very huge uh, natural base. Okay. So they can play also on this uh, dimension of being a natural product, uh, no. uh, let's say healthy and so on and so forth. Let's say that is uh, another dimension. Uh, and the main customer, um, or can you yep. give us uh, maybe a picture of the main customers that would buy this type yes. of product? So as I was saying, if we talk about final customer, um, we can yep. divide it mainly in uh, both younger and uh, older, um, mainly female. Uh, what I would say is that is a customer that is um, not too much 
um, closed to the beauty trend in terms of brands and in terms of what is cool or what is advertised on uh, um, on TikTok or on uh, or other social media is a different kind of uh, uh, target population. Is a population that is doing research in searching for what is better for their own skin. So it's not just someone that has seen everyone is using this brand and so I'm buying it and they trust just because it's sold by a, ph a pharmacy but without going into the details of the ingredients. So this is for someone that is doing research in what he's putting on his face mainly uh, and uh, has a, an understanding of, uh, uh, of the differences between chemical products and natural products. At the same time, another sector can be uh, all the part of the population that have some uh, um, issue with their skin, so they are more sensitive, and so in some way are, uh, they have the needs of going through more natural uh, uh, products. So it's both for people that are willing to use natural product or people that needs to use more natural product. But for sure, as for a population that is doing more research compared to just stop be in front of what is most used or more advertised uh, um, everywhere. This is important in your strategy. I'm giving you some uh, some suggestion because maybe it's not in their uh, um, in their strategy at the moment. Put big uh, advertising panel everywhere in the in the city. It's a different kind of uh, population. Okay. But RD is made uh, in house uh, or they have yeah. uh, cooperation uh, with other? Uh, I don't it's know. Made, it's made in house. In house. They are uh, doing the research and, uh, and development uh, inside their um, their company. Okay, that's uh, that's interesting. I mean, for, um, given that they are not uh, such a big company, so having an RD. It's yes, uh, all done in the it's, family. It's an um, added value. So, Adeline, please go. On. Uh, yes. Uh, you say that uh, they or sell their own products or they um, like uh, sell the research part. Mm -hmm. And do you know uh, at the moment what uh, enables them to make uh, the most sales? Uh, no, I do not have the details about their um, their revenue in um, in this moment. Um, so no, I do not know how to 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 reply on uh, on this question more specifically. You can again when you do not have data, and this is something that in your life will happen also in uh, in real working life. Maybe you do not have all the uh, information uh, in your hands. Not every time the companies are willing to to explain and to give all the information that the about themselves um, you can again doing some assumptions so you can say that based on your analysis or based on the trends of the market you suggest to push the brand or to push the research and development line and compare in them based on this of course uh, choose the correct uh, um, target of uh, of consumer or uh, buyers for uh, for your company okay thank, thank you. you another question by Isa. Yes. Hi. Where Hello. is the company located in um, in Italy? I think in south. Of, I think in south of Italy. It should be no, no, no. Sorry, in the north one. This one is the north one. because the uh, yes, 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 the right. next one is in the south of Italy. Uh, south of Italy. Yes. Yeah, I think it's yes. No, because it's, I was checking the the web page, but it's in Italian. I know. Italian. I know. This is a uh, this is a uh, a mistake from my side. Uh, unfortunately, their website is just in Italian. Um, if it's available in your country using Google Chrome, you can uh, uh, translate every all the page in uh, in English with the translator. Otherwise, another good source is uh, on uh, Alibaba.com. So you have uh, the the link of the mini site. There, everything is written in English. Uh, okay. If you are coming from a different country and you are speaking a different language, you can also select. A different language and see everything translated so you do not need to uh, register on alibaba.com to see information so i strongly suggest to you actually to go uh, on alibaba.com from starting from the mini site that we have given to you uh, about the company and have a look 
you will lend it to their mini site. So where you have all the main information, then you can go on product and see their product pages. Um, Alibaba.com is also good sources for all of you to understand their B2B price and also try to understand which could be their margin compared to maybe the B2C price that you can see on their online shop. Um, moreover, you can uh, see all the certification, for example, for this company and all the uh, customization that are possible for each product. Uh, while on the other side, uh, always on the mini side, you also have the profile part of the company. In the profile, you find part of the information that I've given to you. Um, usually there is a long explanation of the history and uh, how the company is working, also in terms of channels that uh, they are using. Um, so I, I, it's my bet to have uh, selected a company that unfortunately at the moment does not have the, the website also in, uh, in English, but I'm sure that you can work very well also in this company that is, I think, very, very good because it gives you a lot of possibility also in terms of being creative uh, to choose different kind of uh, uh, export and marketing uh, different challenges. Um, but uh, yeah, yes, you can find the information in uh, some different ways uh, or with the translation button if you if you do have uh, on um, on Google Chrome, for example. Thank you. One more question. Yes. Um, do they do they have like a company? Do they make delivery that they send products? If I place an order, for example, do they make the delivery? I didn't get to point, sorry. Okay, if I, I don't know the location of the company, for example, if they have a location that I can place an order and they can send the product or no, or it's just through Alibaba, like a B2C. No, 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 the, all, they, they they use different career to, to send the product. Alibaba is not giving, um, this is a clarification to everyone, uh, Alibaba.com is not doing uh, the shipping of the product. It's just a place where sellers and buyer can connect can know each other but all the negotiation and at the end the um the payment and the shipping are in the hand of the seller and uh, okay. uh, and the buyer so um in your strategy actually what when you will arrive at the b2b part uh, alibaba is usually a point that you can highlight because alibaba.com is present in all the the region everywhere in the world and this company already has um a profile on alibaba.com so actually it means that without any additional cost, they can focus maybe more on doing export and find new buyers through Alibaba.com. So what you can do is right. maybe suggesting if uh, their pricing are not in line with the countries they want to, to export to, or if some different uh, um, um, change in terms, as we were saying, for example, labeling are needed. Right. Uh, and what you can do is maybe suggest specific uh, advertising uh, um, on Alibaba.com for that region. So on Alibaba.com, what a company can do is do advertising for for a specific regions so and this way if we want to go to Germany for example they can do advertising for Germany and being the first results from a in, into the German market so if the buyer is in Germany but being just lower for France and other comp and other countries so Alibaba.com is usually a channel that we suggest you to propose because actually they are already there and is everywhere so it's a, it's an easy choice and a supporting choice to find new uh, new commercial partners. Thank okay. you, thank you so much. So, uh, Michele, very quick because we run out of time. Quick answer, yeah, I just want, quick question. Yeah. Uh, do you hear me? Yeah. Okay, yeah, I just want to make uh, have a clarification because I've seen that on the website they have also healthcare products, but uh, should we consider it? Should we consider them yeah. or should we avoid? Yeah, Yes, they, they have it. Uh, it's um, like a second part of uh, of the line, a, a new part that they uh, that they have added. Of course, you can uh, um, you can also focus on uh, on that part. Um, this is the mine are just the main information and the most sold uh, part of their uh, of their selection. But for sure, every product that you see on their website that they are working on, you can uh, use it. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay. okay, so thank you. So I've added in chat the website with the mini website.
it. But now uh, let's go to the last uh, company, Argania. Yeah, it's Voltolina is uh, the name of the Voltolina, brand. Voltolina, yeah. Okay, yeah, correct. So this company has born almost 20 years uh, ago, uh, ago. They are also uh, pioneering the idea of use uh, uh, of natural ingredients. Um, is again a success of a made in Italy um, company uh, that is actually importing argan oil um, to Italy. They were one of the first one, the first important uh, importer of argan oil um, on um, on the market, on which they have bases their cosmetic lines. So this is a, a product that is made mainly with uh, argan oil uh, from uh, from Morocco and with all the again tradition and ancient tradition of the people of Morocco with all the beneficial um, of uh, of this oil that have been worked and uh, um, and become exclusive cosmetic product. They are again made in Italy, so all the uh, um, yes. Sorry, Virginia. So on the top it should be Voltolina, not Thermalis, right? On the top left, I read. read oh see. yes, yes, yes. Here is Argani. Okay, now just okay, now yes. to to avoid confusion. Yes, thanks. So here... No, no, no. Thanks for. Uh, I will. I will change it later on. But yeah, yeah thanks. Voltolina. Okay. Yeah, um, the Jagen um, company between five to ten uh, people with a turnover lower than two point five million dollars, but over one million dollars, so a little bit a, a little bit bigger compared to to the other one in terms of uh, um, of uh, of turnover. They are also, of course, doing uh, everything that is related to private label and personalization, customization of the product based on the. Um, on the needs of the buyers. Um, their main market is 70% domestic and uh, um, they have also some uh, uh, long-term relationship in Western and Eastern Europe. Uh, they have also already sold uh, and uh, some sporadic orders, sometimes another uh, kind of partnership with, uh, um, with buyers coming from Canada, Japan and South uh, Korea. So they are also in this 20 year uh, be successful in uh, uh, selling their product far from, uh, from just their domestic country. But of course, the main um, part of their turnover is the, at the moment based uh, in, uh, into the domestic and then European market. They are uh, speaking English, French and Italian. Um, they are one or two people in the trade department and has an average lead time of 45 days. Um, the nearest port are all the ports actually in the north of Italy, so Venice, uh, Genova and uh, La Spezia. Um, the main channel for them are the pharmacy again, but also the wellness center because argan oil is everything that is connected also to all the messages and everything that is related uh, to uh, to the well-being of, uh, of people. They are of course participating uh, uh, to the trade show to find new buyers and new uh, commercial partners and uh, uh, present uh, online, uh, um, as we know, uh, mainly on um, on Alibaba.com for uh, um, for the the B two B the B two B part. Um, then um, the next slide, the uh, product line. Uh, again, also for this company online, you can find some other, but the three main uh, product line are the exclusive one, that is one that with new biotechnologies uh, is uh, uh, putting together and exploit the best of the ancient tradition to create a um, good, uh, very good and exclusive uh, product. Then they have a part for, uh, for baby, um, so uh, baby line for, for children care. And then they have also sunscreen line. So these are the three main. Um, they have some other lines. Um, be careful when you uh, prepare the export strategy of this company, because of course the different lines has totally different target uh, uh, of uh, population and consumers. So um, and try to understand which is the best line to enter the market. Then, of course, doesn't mean that they cannot use and import and export also the others. But uh, let's try to, to focus on one um, that you think is the best one for the market or for the channel that you have choose. Yeah.
Okay, thank you, Virginia. So first of all, let's see if there are uh, specific questions by the audience, by the student. So I don't see any hand. So you were talking about the three different uh, lines. Uh, um, so do you think that they do, do they have a higher propensity to go online with one of them, or do you uh, are they so open general, to? Yeah. Yeah. In general, the the exclusive line, and in general, all the um, the part not selecting just the children uh, um, population or just uh, the sunscreen line. So the more general one about the um, the argan oil is the most used. OK, so in what uh, I is, is, to you is the exclusive line, but I have also some other that is not exclusive. So different price actually uh, that can be can be the third, the, the core part. OK, um, and uh, the, the reason is, uh, uh, is we, which one? What is the reason why that one is more, let's say, uh, popular and um, both? Any idea? Oh, sorry, I didn't get uh, the question. What, what is the, the reason why that line is uh, more popular abroad? Uh, yeah, well, more... it's, um, it's the one that is uh, also most well known in terms of usage of argan oil. So uh, it's more easier and it's already uh, known in many countries also okay. abroad. All the, the points and advantages. more awareness, let's say, about yes. the product. Okay. It's about, yes, the awareness. That's clear. Uh, before the next question, I see two hands, so I give space to the students. So let's start with Stefano. Um, Stefano, please go. On. Okay, uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, I have a question about the main markets. Uh, mm -hmm. In particular, you mentioned before, then, um, okay, domestic and Western Europe, but Eastern Europe are the main core. Mm -hmm. But about the other country like Japan and South Korea, they have a, a very, very small, uh, um, I don't know, they are entered in this market in a very uh, small just percentage for, or they... I would say just first this contact. I do not have the details of how big is the transaction, but if we talk about their uh, uh, usual turnover uh, is mainly done in domestic market and something in Europe, while the other countries are mentioned like uh, already exported in, but not like uh, as something established. Okay. Already established. Not not a stable presence. So because especially as as for I Japan know, and South Korea. No. Yeah. Okay. So because for Japan and South Korea, they are very good market for cosmetics. So I was asking for this reason. Thank you so much. Yes, actually, is uh, as I was saying before, you can of course also uh, create a strategy to go on on um, on countries where maybe in the presentation there is written that I have already had a business or something uh, that is um, going on at the moment. Uh, but again, it's just based on your assumptions. So, for example, what you were uh, saying, anticipating is that uh, it could be a good market. So this can be your assumption in, in the selection of the of the market where you want to to go. Export. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Stefano. And Virginia, Alexander, please. Alexander, you're mute. Okay, you're not talking anymore. Okay, maybe he will draw the question. Okay, so um, uh, maybe you can tell us something more about. Uh, um let's say marketing that they are doing so some marketing yeah. strategies yeah actually um they are um doing more about their uh, their brand also voltolina is the name connected to the family and to the owner of the company they have also created the brand argania that is more close to the Ar um, argan oil so in this you can already understand in terms of strategy that of course they are also doing um private label and customization but uh there is a focus that is higher also in terms of their brand and uh, creating brand awareness and go exporting with uh, with their own brand. Um, so for sure, they are trying to positioning uh, themselves with their own brand. 
um, and um, doing uh, marketing uh, online, being present also in some more used uh, marketplaces like also Amazon uh, with uh, with their product, and also in a physical uh, uh, shop like pharmacy or uh, wellness center uh, where they have some partnership. They are uh, again um, advertising their product in a more strong way compared to 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 other companies. Okay, thank you. Uh, Alexander, are you able to ask a question? Yes, now I am. Okay. I just had to reset my camera. So my question is uh, quite simple. Of the current methods of transportation for the products available, that being uh, rail, truck, or shipping, which of the three methods is the most popular? Um, I do not know what is the preference for the companies. Um, you can do what I will suggest to you is to do assumption and understand um, in uh, in relation for we, on which we, we, which is the country that you have chosen and how far it is. Uh, also, the distance can be one of the market criteria that you will uh, use in the selection of uh, of the market. So based on this, you can understand which is the best way. Uh, also, with the strategy that you want. So um, make some example. If you're entering a market that is very close and you are pushing on the B2C strategy, maybe you do not need to have a, a container going there or a plane going there. It also can be based on track on some uh, um, different uh, uh, on this kind of traditional uh, uh, way of shipping the product. While, of course, if you are going in South Korea, as we were saying before with Stefano, and you want to do a partnership with all the pharmacy that are there, well, probably the plane will be a bit too much expensive and you do not have a mm, constraint in terms of times. It can also take three weeks. It means that maybe it will start later on the collaboration, but the ship will, will be for sure the, the best way. So um, in general about the logistic, I would not put too many constraints on you also because this company are um, starting to do an export and you will create their uh, strategy. So again, there is no wrong or correct um, answer. Uh, answer is just based on uh, your assumption makes something that is logic from uh, uh, time uh, meanings uh, and cost. Understood. And I also have a follow up question if you don't mind. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So my follow up question is, is there a spoilage time on the Argonne line of products or any of the products for this company? Didn't get the point, sorry. Is there a spoilage time as in the amount of time before the product becomes lesser quality. Oh, so like expiration date? Yes. Yeah. Well, all the um, all the cosmetics uh, product needs to have uh, um, an expiration date. This is by law. Uh, I do not know actually uh, the expiration date of this product. Usually, but usually the expiration date of cosmetics product is based on when the product is opened. So it's not like mm -hmm. food that is like the the, um, the March 2025, but it's like six months after you open it or 12 months after you open it. So it's something that uh, usually does not have too much weight in the export mm -hmm. because you can export and then it will be the final customer then when we'll open, we'll have the, um, the expiration date, but um, not totally sure 100 percent is a very specific question uh good that you are going into into this kind of uh, details again um if you can find this information good maybe you can find some good image of the product and you can see if there is usually is an image of a bottle uh like with an open cup and there is mm -hmm. 6m or 12m if it's in this way is what i've told you if there if you see a date that is different but I, I do not know which is uh, the way that they are doing. Again, you can do assumption and yeah. So. Understood. Thank you very much. Thank you. OK, maybe Virginia you can tell us something about the main competitors that the company perceive. I mean, if there are some uh, uh, specific competitors that they fear more than the others. Uh, I mean, uh, if you can tell us something about, yeah. Um, yeah, that's at the, the moment I do not know uh, names uh, well known like as we were doing example before for, uh, for other uh, categories. Um, there are for sure 
uh, competitor, but also mm. the fact that we are not um, so used uh, to this kind of product and we cannot have a name that comes straight to our mind. It means that probably it's a more fragmented uh, uh, market compared to uh, like the coffee one where everyone has thought about Nespresso after just one second of my presentation. So probably is a market where there is uh, uh, there are many competitors, but is less polarized through uh, just one uh, one brand. Okay, okay, thank you. Um, then uh, just uh, uh, as a pricing, you can tell us something whether it is positioned as a uh, kind of uh, high quality type of products or still they compete on price. No, uh, actually, um, their pricing are, uh, um, dif I mean, they are trying to have different lines, as I was saying. Uh, so, for example, uh, the level of uh, pureness of the argan oil can bring to different products, different line and different price level. So, in general, again, it's not um, a very low price, so it's not uh, um, a low price, but this is based on the quality of the product, so it's part of the strategy of having um, a good quality product. And then at the same time, they are very good in creating different uh, range of price based uh, on how much is pure the argan oil inside uh, uh, the product. Okay, so there is a it's proportional basically to the um, pureness of the argan oil and therefore they are offering both high quality type of products. And yeah, this is something to took some way in, somehow into account when doing uh, comparison with uh, with other uh, competitors. Uh, try always to be careful about this because a product that is just 5% argan oil and the rest is water, of course, will cost less, but it's not like 100% argan oil. That's an interesting uh, use for news. Okay, very well. Um, we have just uh, two minutes left, so let's see if there are some final questions by uh, the students. Um, uh, otherwise, uh, um, I think we can, uh, uh, I mean, close uh, also this uh, presentation. So, um, Virginia, um, first of all, thank you very much for your uh, uh, presentation. I mean, you gave us some uh, useful insights that students can use uh, now for exploring uh, this company and starting working on uh, uh, on them. And um, definitely, uh, I mean, there are uh, several um, assumptions and possibilities, uh, as you were saying, uh, um, there are only part of the information that is part of the game. And I think it's the yep. same way through which you, you also work. You don't have all the information, even if uh, you have a contract with them and you they are your customers, but they don't give you all the information that you will need in order to support the internationalization strategy. So I think it's, it's part important. of the challenge actually to uh, to be pushed to do some assumption and try to, to find the best way to, to push and export the product. And being coherent throughout yeah. the assumption that then you do and then uh, because the outcome should be the consequence of the assumption that are made. Uh, okay, thank you very much, Virginia. Thank you. And okay. uh, thank you to all participants. So we will make the recording available and uh, see you soon. Uh, to my students, see you on Monday and to the others, uh, see you soon. Uh, I mean, in, um, maybe somewhere, okay, in some conferences or some other universities. Okay. Thank you very much. And thank bye you, Vasil. I don't know if he's still online, probably not. Thank you, Virginia. Bye bye. See you soon. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Hey, Stefano. Um, I do have a question. Uh, it's about the Virginia left. Uh, a question? Yes, for what? No, it's, it's to you um, because I did not get the email for the survey from um, the X Culture project um, because all of my teammates got the email for the survey and I didn't get it. They told me they got it on Tuesday. Um, around midday and I checked my email several times and I didn't get it. Um, so